Good morning and welcome to today's session of Imagine America Radio, our continuing career and technical education webinar series. My name is Bob Martin. I'm the president and CEO of the Imagine America Foundation. Joining me on today's call is my foundation colleague, Lee Double A. Lee and I are both very excited about today's topic. When is healthcare the perfect fit with Rasmussen University? Rasmussen University is an institution of higher education dedicated to global enrichment and meeting the involving needs of the diverse communities they serve. With an emphasis on innovative programs, dynamic curriculum, and general education skills, Rasmussen is committed to being a pioneer in the field of career-focused education. Rasmussen University is also a new partner of the Imagine America Scholarship Program. Your students can now apply for the Imagine America Scholarship to attend Rasmussen Uni University through our foundation. If you'd like more information on our scholarship programs or how your students can apply, you can either go contact me directly or go to our website, www.imagine-america.org. Since our beginning in 1999, Imagine America remains a leading sponsor of scholarship aid to enrolling high school students. However, our country faces a serious shortage in certified technicians. We hear from employers in virtually all sections of the country desperately looking for qualified employees, so we need to do more. Our partner in today's presentation again is Rasmussen University, and joining us today to discuss in detail the looming technician shortage and how Rasmussen University is helping meet this need is Brian Hogan. But before turning the program over to Brian, let me outline today's agenda. Today's session of Imagine America Radio will be 30 minutes maximum with question and answers at the end of the presentation. All participants can submit questions while the presentation is in session via the Q&A feature or the chat feature in this Zoom meeting. At the end of the presentation, or approximately 1025, I will then present any questions offered by the participants and we'll address as many questions as possible and provide written responses and follow-up emails if necessary. We will have a hard close at 1030 a.m. So without taking any more time out of today's presentation, let me turn today's session over to Brian. Brian, the floor is yours. Well, good morning, everyone. Uh, thank you for taking your time out of your busy days to listen to me discuss a little bit about Rasmussen University and specifically our healthcare uh, programs that we do offer. Uh, again, my name is Dr. Brian Haugen. I am the director um, at specifically the Fargo and Moorhead location, but in Minnesota, we also have seven other physical locations within the state of Minnesota. I think I'm frozen here just a second. Okay, here we go. So today, what I'm going to talk about is the workforce trends, um, specifically healthcare trends as well, and then other healthcare education op options that we offer here at Rasmussen University. I'll also discuss a little bit about Rasmussen University, and at the end, again, some questions and answers. So looking at workforce trends and really uh, communicating the importance of college, if you look at these two graphs, these are both based from the career outlook of the U.S. Bureau of Labor Statistics. So the first graph there really outlines the importance of college. So little less than um, a high school diploma by education level, you're only earning a weekly average about 600, but all the way up to a bachelor's degree, you can see where it gets a little bit higher each level of education and almost doubles at the bachelor's level. And also look at the unemployment rate. So this graph also outlines if they have a little bit less than a high school diploma versus if they have a high school diploma, associate degree or bachelor's degree and how it lowers their level of unemployment rates. So specifically in healthcare trends. So between the years of 2020 to 2030, also based on the US Bureau of Statistics, overall, all occupations have a projected growth of 7.7%. However, if you look specifically at healthcare uh, occupations, it's about 16%. And I know here in fargo Morad and across the whole US due to the pandemic as well, we've had a lot of nursing shortages and other healthcare occupation shortages. So what kind of traits make, uh, personal traits make it uh, for the healthcare, uh, can't even talk, sorry. What kind of <laughs> traits make a good healthcare career person? Someone can actually, is a natural communicator, unlike myself right now, so sorry about that. <laughs> Someone who is a critical thinker, who is a good problem solver, obviously detail orientated, and if they're gonna be dealing with patients directly or indirectly, that they're compassionate and empathetic. 
So finding the perfect fit. So if people want to deal directly with patient care, there's obviously a lot of options out there, but there's some people that love healthcare, but just don't want to deal with the blood, the guts, or maybe even patients directly. So there's other options too. So obviously with direct patient care, um, there's nursing that we offer, medical assisting. Um, we have the practical nursing option, rad tech, pharmacy technician. But if, again, they don't want to deal with the direct patient care and still like health care, there's also a demand for medical quarters behind the scenes. Um, there's assistant medical officer manager. There's health information technician, medical administrative assistant, and community health worker. So at Rasmussen College, it's nice because we do offer different levels of education where students can really build upon their skills if they want to do so. They can get in the door with a diploma or certificate. Um, here at Rasmussen University, we offer medical billing and coding certificate, a medical assisting certificate, pharmacy technician, medical administration assistant, and we also offer a practical nursing program that can be completed in as little as uh, 12 months or a year. Then if they want to build on or however, they can also start at the associate level too. Um, we do have a professional uh, ADN program, which I'll come as the registered nursing. Um, we have health information technician, surgical technologist, human services, and health sciences. Building again, if they want to keep continuing their education, which is great, we do offer R and BSN, health information management, health and wellness, human services, and healthcare management. And not on these slides, uh, the great thing about Rasmussen, we also now have master's programs and doctoral program in nursing. So they can just keep continuing on if they wanna do so. So our support team, I'm pretty proud of our Rasmussen University support team and how we work directly with students. So I myself am the director of admissions. So my team is great to help students. Um, starting college can be very scary, especially if they're right out of high school. Like how do they apply for financial aid? How, what questions should they ask about accreditation? Uh, how do you do the enrollment steps? Maybe their parents have questions. So that's what my team does. And we really do a one-on-one -on -one self approach with these students to help them to be successful. After we enroll them and get them through the enrollment steps, we hand them over to advisors. And those advisors are also one-on-one -on -one help with them as well based on their program. And they help them throughout the rest of their academic career with us, getting their scheduling done, um, any financial aid pieces that need to be continued, et cetera, any questions. Um, we also offer financial aid for those that qualify. Besides financial aid, we have other things besides the scholarship I'll discuss a little later. But we also have alliances with many businesses in Minnesota. Um, with the alliances, if they work at these particular places, they can receive also an additional discount off of their tuition. And uh, we other like change of life scholarships. So we really try to find ways to make um, education affordable for students. We offer library and learning services. Um, peer mentoring is very cool where we uh, pair them up with another peer in their program to help them. Um, we have online tutoring, career services after they graduate or even during school. And then we also offer 24 seven tech support that they can call anytime if they're having any technical issues. So at Rasmussen, we do have a unique approach. Um, even prior to the pandemic, we prided ourselves in some of our online programs, but obviously with healthcare, we need to mix that in with some um, experience as well, um, hands-on for some of these programs, obviously. Online programs, um, like on the slide it says, prepares uh, students for their future. It connects them with uh, live sessions, interactive classrooms and environments, and in online discussion forums. Um, with the online courses, they can be accessed from their computer, their tablet, or their smartphone. And then we also have some great state-of-the-art labs at our um, campus facilities. Like I know here in Fargo-Moorhead, we have a fantastic nursing simulation lab that's very interactive with dummies and equipment. And it's, it's a great way for students to learn also outside of actually going to a clinical site for some of the programs. So Rasmussen University, I mean, we've been around for 120 years, and we actually were founded by Walter Rasmussen right in Minnesota and St. Paul. We were founded based on the need for the growing business class. Um, by 2001, we were offering, um, I'm sorry, by 2006, we were offering bachelor's degrees. 2016, we're offering graduate degrees. And now, like I mentioned, we're also offering up to the doctoral level for nursing. And as of this last year, we've changed our name from uh, Rasmussen College, and now we are Rasmussen University to reflect those uh, graduate degrees and beyond. We also uh, have 23 campuses physically throughout the US. We also serve the whole country uh, nationally online. 
We have 50 plus career focused programs, and these are the seven areas of study that we offer nursing, health sciences, business, justice studies, education, technology, and design. We're also uh, accredited by HLC or the Higher Learning Commission. And for more information for this accreditation, you can check out this website. So this is a $1,000 Imagine America scholarship, another way for students to get some funding for education, which is fantastic. Who can apply uh, 2021 or 2022 high school graduates with a GPA of 2.5 or above? And how they can apply is through the, either the Imagine America Foundation's mobile app or through this website, imagine-america.org forward slash apply for scholarships. So uh, I'll open up the floor if there were any questions. Again, thank you for taking your time. Um, I should also have said happy Veterans Day today too as well. So thank all the veterans that might be listening for your service. Um, you can, uh, if you do have questions that you don't want to ask now, you can visit our uh, website, rasmussen.edu, or you can contact me directly. This is my direct phone number for the office or my email address. And then for more information on the Imagine American Scholarships, you can visit imagine-america.org. All right. Thanks, Brian. I appreciate that. We are going to open this up now for the Q&A portion of our presentation. So if you have a question for Brian, please uh, type it into the, the Q&A so that we know uh, who uh, has asked the question. I'm also going to launch a poll question here. If you'd like somebody to contact you about presenting similar information on career and technical education to your students, uh, please indicate so on the poll so that we know who to reach out to at the end of this uh, presentation. So uh, Brian, it does look like the first question, this person wants to know if students are eligible for federal financial aid in order to attend Rasmussen University. Can you kind of speak to, um, you know, uh, the FAFSA and helping how Rasmussen helps students fill out the FAFSA? Oh, yes, certainly. So again, that would be with my team in admissions. Uh, starting off, we direct them to the FAFSA web website, the federal government website. Um, we can assist them in filling out the FAFSA if they have any questions. Can it, it can be quite in-depth. The nice thing now, uh, back in my day, it was actually paper. Now it's online, so it's great. So um, once it is submitted um, correctly, it gets, comes back to our team, our financial aid team, and we can do an estimate for them. So we'll break down what subsidized and unsubsidized grants they qualify, what state grants they may qualify for, or any Pell grant money. So all of that, we do help them with and assist, which um, I think is a great service to our students and help answer any questions before they start classes. Gotcha. Okay. And um, this next question, this person wants to know uh, if there are GPA or SAT requirements in order to attend Erasmus. No, there is not. We do have a couple entrance uh, requirements. One is just called a RAS Ready. It's really an entrance exam to see what their English and reading and math levels are. We also have a smarter measures assessment um, for skills, typing, whatnot. Um, that would just be for most of our programs. However, if they're going into a uh, nursing field, then we also, we, instead of those exams, we have a TEAS exam. It's a pretty popular exam a lot of nursing schools use um, that they do now take online. So it's reading, math, English, those kind of things. So then they need a required score. Um, so if, if they want to go to a practical nursing, if they want to go to an uh, ADN program or bachelor's program, it's a different T score for each of those programs. Okay, I understand. And um, I, I think, as you mentioned earlier, that Rasmussen offers everything from a uh, licensed practical nursing program to a doctorate in nursing uh, program. Is that correct? That is correct. That's great because you could, you know, you could really start out at that licensed practical nursing realm and then move up throughout within Rasmussen uh, while you're, you know, working maybe even uh, uh, in your licensed practical nursing program. And then while you're working towards that associate's degree in nursing, which is the ADN uh, abbreviation we were talking about, and then going into the BSN and getting a registered nurse um, and then, you know, furthering your education if you'd like to. Uh, I just think it's really cool that Rasmussen offers the, the full gamut of programs for nursing. Um, okay. Brian, th Brian, this is Bob. Bob, um, again, um, let, me, let me just follow up on that because I think that's a question that we've had before. Um, what strikes me about what Lee just said and what you have in your presentation is a career ladder approach to a healthcare career. Mm -hmm. uh, give uh, a, an individual, male or female, 
the ability to kind of stick their toe in the water uh, in the diploma or the um, in the diploma side, and then see how see how it works out. See the correlation. Get the job. Get in there and do something. Would that be? Is that a stretch to kind of talk to it? Talk to this as a a career ladder approach. No, that's definitely correct. So students, if they do want that approach and want to start working in the field faster, it's a great way for them get their practical nursing degree, start working in the field, and then maybe come back for their uh, associate or their bachelor's. They could have both options. Um, what's great about Rasmussen is if they just want the bachelor's degree, they don't have to start the career laddering, though. Either way, it's great both programs. Um, uh, if they do get their associate in um, their ADN, the registered nurse, they can also ladder, they have an RN to BSN, which that's an online yeah. program mostly, which that's great too, because then they can really be in the field, making some great money, helping out the career shortage, and then also getting their classes done mainly online to further education for bachelor's degree. So yeah, lots of different it, options. Yeah, and, and, you're, and you're right there with them all the way along, and it's all based upon success. Now, let me, well, let me ask this one more question, because I, I find it very interesting, personally. Um, you talk about your your careers, and you and I, I see it as student at, as patient facing and non patient facing as I see it. So the idea is that if people want to get into healthcare, and they think it's only going to I got to go on a on a nursing track. That's clearly not. That's clearly a, a something we want to dispel. That that so you've got patient facing versus non patient facing both in the healthcare career. Is that fair? That's definitely correct. So if they want to deal with the patient directly and that's what they enjoy doing, hands-on, we have those career options. But like I said, some people don't want to deal with patients, blood or guts or anything, but they could, medical coding is a great field to get into. And that ladders into our health information technician degree, which then again, that now ladders into our health information management bachelor's degree. So we have lots of different options. And those people are very vital too, you know, for insurance reimbursement, those kind of things as well. So, or electronically handling the patient's file. So those people are just in the demand as the people that are dealing directly with these patients as well. Yeah, uh, Brian, I, I think that uh, everything you just said makes a lot of sense. Now, let me ask you, let's go back to that, uh, the ladder concept of uh, you get your diploma and then uh, associates, then bachelors. And in some cases, I'm guessing you probably don't even need a bachelor's. It's totally fine to stop with um, a diploma or an associates. But my question is about um, can you, can a student at Rasmussen get their diploma in medical billing and coding and then say, you know what, I actually think I would be better at the patient facing side of things and go uh, towards an associate's degree uh, in nursing? Does, how does that translate? Is that possible for students to be able to do? Um, can you speak to that a little? Yes, definitely. It would. Uh, it's a great uh, question. Honestly, yes, that could be a possibility. We can look at transfer credits. That's another thing I should mention. We do look at transfer credits from other colleges. So if that's something they want to do, and this actually happens quite a lot going vice versa. We have a lot of nursing people or nursing nurses, I should say, that are actually looking to retire or getting close to retirement age, they mm -hmm. can sometimes come back and do the medical billing and coding certificate certificate because it's a great career, like a job on the side if they're getting close to retirement. So um, great thing about healthcare, it's always kind of building. I mean, even if you're directly or indirectly, it's all correlated. So anything yeah. can, can be possible of moving fields within healthcare. Yeah, I think I find it especially interesting for high school graduates. You know, if you if you think that you want to get into healthcare and you start off with medical billing and coding thinking, oh, well, I don't really know if I want to be patient facing and then find out that you do want to be patient facing and you can kind of sort of pivot and uh, go into uh, a different uh, associate's degree program, but still have that basic knowledge and that experience behind you with that. Oh, exactly. You know, it, you know, Brian, uh, uh, I, I'm speaking, this is on personal side, but um, I don't know where these people come from, but I sure am glad you and they find you and they find Rasmus. And I just had a personal experience less than a month ago down here in uh, Southwest Florida. And I was absolutely thrilled with the quality of the Rasmussen Nursing School of Nursing graduates for the, 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 the help and the service they provided to my wife. They were outstanding. I would be proud to have had any one of those young people as my daughter or my niece or my nephew, or in one case, yeah, yeah, or my nephew. So I just want to thank you. I just, I don't know where you find them, but I hope you keep doing it. And I hope they keep people keep stepping up. Well, that puts a smile on my face. Thank you. That's awesome. 
we love educating the people that be in these fields, and that's great that they re you receive such great care too. Oh, I know, but but you must get that all the time. I I, I don't mean to d diminish what I'm saying, but well, believe me, but you must get that a lot because you now after what we've gone through with COVID, I just can't believe the high quality people, in particular young women that are going into nursing and are in nursing. It's just outstanding. It's just outstanding. Okay, Lee, do we have any other questions before before we close? Uh, no, I don't think so. Hey, for the, uh, I apologize for having gone off, Brian, uh, but I, I had to say that. No, uh, that's fantastic. Thank you for saying that. <laughs> for, for the benefit our, of our audience, um, we go through a couple logistical uh, issues. One is that we have compiled and recorded um, uh, this session, and it will be made available to um, uh, all registrants, and it will also be on our website. Um, we'll send this uh, recording out to all the registrants and they'll be able to download it and or they could go to the website and, and, and listen to it again. I really encourage people to go back and listen to them twice. You all, I always learn something the second time I listen to it. Um, second is we're, we're compiling all these questions and we will send them out um, uh, to everyone on here and we'll, follow, we'll send any follow-ups out as it's necessary. As I said, we've placed this, this recording on our website, www.imagine-america.org with very specific download instructions, would encourage you to go listen to it. Finally, uh, Lee, my colleague, is gonna be sending you out a survey about this session and about just generally Imagine America Radio. We really look forward to hearing from you about the, the programming that we have and, and, and what we might be able to do going forward in the future. Uh, before we close, I'd like to thank our participants, the educators that are that taking time out of their very busy schedule to sit with us and for this 30-minute session, talk about careers in nursing, just in general in healthcare. We know that you've got a lot of demands for your time. We know that, and we just appreciate you taking just a little bit of time, carving it out of your schedule and sharing it with us. I also want to thank Brian um, for joining us today from Rasmussen University. Outstanding job. Um, and I would also encourage you to go back to her uh, contact information and contact her directly about any questions about the presentation, about Rasmussen University, about healthcare careers, or just really about career and technical education. She is a fountain of information. So on behalf of the Imagine America Foundation, Lee Doubleday and myself, I want to thank you for joining us and say goodbye.